piece of paper and they stitched it together. Then they wrote the Chinese characters up and down. But in the corner of the paper, they made an indication of what subject on each page. If you happen to flip it fast, that little mark in the corner jumped around. It didn't take long for a Chinese artist to draw a bird with the wings in different positions in the corner of the page. And if you flip it, the bird does this. If anybody doesn't understand that, I'll repeat it again. If there's anything I say that you don't understand, don't accept it. I don't get it. And when the question period comes, if you ask a question, if I fail to answer it, it's up to you to say, you didn't answer my question. That's the way the Venus Project works. I want you to understand what I'm saying, but I can't demand that. So I'm going to tell you again. Man never invented anything. They teach you in school that the wheel was the beginning of technology. I'm sure you've all heard that crap. A tree fell over another tree. When a guy pulled it, it rolled. Nobody said, I've got to make a wheel. The brain doesn't work that way. You experience things. You encounter things. And that's where it comes from. However, when you take a, a log and there's one stone in the way, that log won't turn. So the guy shaved the bark off the middle of the tree and the ends were larger. That's hence the wheel. But nobody sat down and says, got to make a wheel. You can't do that. You can't make a motion picture camera unless you see things that suggest that. If you still have difficulty with that, say a man lives in a cave. To get up a cave, if you step on the severe incline, you slip. If you look for slight flat, every time you climb a hill, you automatically look for a slight flat. And that's how you get up the hill. Well, after this guy lives in that cave 10 years, there are steps. If you step on the flats continuously. Then when he moves, he cuts the steps. He doesn't come and say, I need steps to get up there. The brain doesn't work that way. The brain works on basis of experience only. Then they tell you there's good and bad people, lazy and hardworking people, all bullshit. And there's no profanity. Maybe if you bake a pie and drop it, she might say, fiddly dee. <laughs> and if a guy bakes a pie and drops it, he says, shit, that means sorry I dropped the pie. It has nothing to do with fecal matter. There are no bad words. Different people use different words. If you go to France or Mexico, they use words like medra. And you say, oh, how charming. It means shit. <laughs> There's a place in Florida called the mouth of the rat. Did you know that? Boca Raton. I live in Boca Raton. If you translate, I live at the mouth of the rat. <laughs> They think it sounds very beautiful, very classical, you know. And they say that the classics produce humane feelings. Classical music, um, poetry, art, literature. The people that are involved in poetry, art, and literature have just the same feelings everybody else has. Jealousy, envy, all of that. So it doesn't do away with it. So we want to know how do you change people so they don't react in aberrant ways of behavior? That means when you raise kids, you have to watch the kid, and you have to make sure that you don't ever use one member of your family against the other. And in school, if I give you an A and you a C, he stands up and says, got an A, you got a C. Bad feelings all through that. In the school, you never give people grades and they announce their grades in front of one another. What you do is you show children things. If they spell cat with a K, A T, see, teacher says that's wrong. Again, doesn't tell the kid anything. We look at it and say, you know, you got most of it right. It's just this K that we change. When you say you're wrong, that isn't what I told you, that doesn't give the kid any information. Whenever you say that's wrong, if you show them how to do it, that's more effective. 
So right, wrong, good and bad comes from the Old Testament, all the old books on religion. And they say that try to be decent, try to be good. You will reflect your culture. If you were brought up as a baby by the headhunters of the Amazon, if you never saw anything else, he'd be a headhunter. And if I said, doesn't it bother you to have 10 shrunken heads? He says, yes, my brother has 20. <laughs> Is he good, bad? No, he's perfectly well adjusted where he's coming from. That's the message. No human is good or bad. If you take you as a baby, it will bring you up in Nazi Germany as a baby, where you never see anything else. All you see is Heil Hitler, Deutschland over alles, Germany above all. You become a Nazi, unless you've seen movies or travel. So all people, let me say this slowly, all people are perfectly well adjusted where they're coming from. Do you know what that means? If you understand what I'm saying, they say, well, a lion or a tiger is naturally aggressive. It's natural to the tiger. You can take a lamb and a tiger, feed them both, bring them up together, and become friends. There is no natural or human nature. You hear that all the time. Human nature never can change human nature. If humans are brought up in scarcity, they save things for a rainy day. If you're brought up in abundance, you throw half the food away. So if you live near a waterfall with wonderful drinking water, nobody comes at night and fills a canteen and steals it. It's scarcity that produces theft or fear of scarcity. So what we have to do is produce an abundance, make it available for everybody. If you have access to you, whatever you want, you don't hit anybody on the head and take that watch away. If a guy steals, say, $200 worth of watches, say it's a third offense, they put him in jail for three or four years. And that cost uh, like a thousand watches. So it's cheaper to give them watch and put them in jail. Think about it. No matter what you steal, if they put you in for 10 years, you know what that cost? Isn't it cheaper to give him a house and a car and a watch so he won't hit you on the head and take anything away? All criminals are made by culture. All prisons are cruel and stupid. They belong in the Middle Ages. You are not civilized yet. And you never become civilized because it's an ongoing process. If you don't understand that, there's no such thing as an intelligent person. An intelligent electrical engineer of 75 years ago couldn't get a job today. So I wrote a story some years ago about this nation, America anyway, getting involved in nuclear war, but 10 people escaped to the Amazon jungle. They live by airplane. And the natives there want to know how smart we are. So they give us a test. What kind of animal went by here? And the people say, went by where? Can't you see the parted grass? Oh, yeah. Which way was the animal going? I don't know. The grass is broken in a given direction. All the weeds lean in the direction the animal is going. Then they say, what kind of an animal was it? How the hell am I now? Look at the footprints in the mud. How heavy was the animal? They don't know. What kind of animal? They don't know. So they give us a test and they find out we're super stupid. <laughs> That's why an intelligence test does not does not measure intelligence. I'm going to give you another definition of intelligence. Intelligence is the ability to extract significance from a wide range of situations. Think about it. If you can look at a situation and know what's going on, like when a guy talks to a girl, he says, you're sweet looking. I love your dimples when you smile. And he says things like, and she says, gee, thank you. And when a guy talks to me, he says, Fresco, I love your wrinkles and your bald head. <laughs> Nobody talks that way to me. <laughs> and when men talk to women, they talk to them in terms of their culture. So we go to bookstores today and we get a book on proper sexual behavior. Strictly bullshit. <laughs> when I was a kid, I went to the South Pacific Islands to see what people would be like if they weren't educated. 
so-called educated. Now, these people used to swim nude ever since they were children, and I never saw a guy look at a female body. If you're brought up nude, swimming nude, he looks at the eyes of the girl only, and there's no, hey, get a load of that chick. That's in this country where you hide things. If you hide a girl's nose and say to a guy, you ever see a girl's nose? No, show him a little bit. He has to lose his collar. 